some of them actually have validity, but there's a lot of things. You know, folks in their, well, there's a statement in the spirit of prophecy. It says, those who lack a close relationship with God will try to compensate for it by a demonstration of zeal and fervor. And you'll find these people out telling folks what they can't do when they're not ready to hear all of that. You know, they don't have a background or a solid basis in the fundament fundamentals of truth and righteousness. So tell your friend that that is the plan of salvation. We have sinned. We are lost. There's a death sentence hanging over our head, and we can't do anything about it. God can has, and has invited us to come to him and ask for forgiveness and restoration. If we ask in the name and blood of his son, he's promised to do that for us. So we need to make that commitment to him. And then I don't find anything wrong with encouraging people to read the spirit of prophecy. Because Sister White explains these things in a humble, caring manner. It's not an offense. Uh, and thanks for asking that. Just a, just a friendly reminder. Oh, okay, thanks. Please. I thought you were going to remind me that water on a piano finishes not. Uh, thank you well, for being kind. Uh, there's a, there's a few of us. This, there's a letter that's got wide distribution in Australia, which I think you've seen. And just for the, for the record, so we'd like to hear. It says that um, it was from the Israeli Antiquities Authority, and it says that. Um, we cannot confirm, sorry, I'll start from the beginning. Dear so-and-so, thank you for your fax letter dated 16th of November 1998 asking about Ron White. We cannot confirm his fines and have no information about them. Ron White has never received a license from the Israeli Antiquities Authority to excavate in Israel. If he says he has excavated in Israel, he has committed an illegal act since any every excavation in Israel must be licensed by our authority or our predecessor, the Israeli Department of Antiquities. Legitimate archaeology finds are published in professional journals or by universities and other recognised scientific institutes. Sincerely yours, Osnat Goaz, spokeswoman for Department of Education Information. So I've just Okay. Well, there's two things happening here. The Israelis don't want this discovery confirmed until, you know, it can be done in a manner that will not cause a bloodbath. Uh, what I was told by the men that I work with, now if you have a photographic memory, uh, you'll remember their names. Amos Cloner. Joseph Gatt, Dan Bahat, General Drory. These men have asked me not to show my permit because the authorizing signature on the permit is are their names. And uh, this is part of the proof that I have, you know, physical evidence that I've been asked not to share. It's their opinion that should the Isra Israeli people as a whole learn that the Ark of the Covenant has been found, that they would want to build a temple to house it in. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that the third most sacred site in Islam or in the Mo Muslim religion is the Dome of the Rock, which is sitting approximately where the temple of Solomon used to be. They would go in mass, blow up that uh, mosque, and start building a temple. And the Muslims would take, shall we say, a violent view of that. And not only would what we now have, the uh, 
terrorists, what we would call radicals, fanatics, and all of that, not only would we have them calling for the blood of the Israeli people, but we would have every Muslim country on this planet calling for it because the leadership, even though they may not be in sympathy, they know that they can be overthrown like the Shah of Iran was overthrown if they don't cater to the, you know, some of the religious fancies of their people. Now, Satan takes advantage of situations like this. If this, all of this excavating was done in a very public place, had I done it without a permit, I assure you that I would have been in prison, mm -hmm. you know. And we showed video, and we will again tonight, of the excavation. We had, uh, you know, I think about 14 people there on that occasion working. And so, on the face of it, this is uh, it's not true. However, this is how the Israelis handle things. If somebody asks these men <clears throat> whether or not they uh, know Ron Wyatt, they'll say, we don't. We do not know Ron Wyatt. Christina, did you bring that book with the ugly face on the front? Do you have it? Could you open that for me? Here and if Christina will be so kind as to let this stay somewhere where you can look at it for a little bit. This is the man that was in charge of antiquities for the Jerusalem area during the time that we carried out our excavation. When called and asked if he knew Ron Wyatt, he said no. If you'll look at this picture, you'll see that the truth is something else. Mm -hmm. Right? Huh? Oh, you're, yeah, you can pass it around or whatever. But we don't want to take the whole day up. But all I'm saying is this. God will have all of this presented. The Ark of the, uh, rather the tables of stone. The Ark of the Covenant will be presented on video because the blood of his son on that mercy seat is his proof to this world that his son died for us. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 6 it says who gave himself a ransom, well one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified our proof shown in due time. So until that due time comes around, if what Sister White says, if what the Bible says about the blood of Christ bearing witness in earth and all of that doesn't persuade you, there's not anything else that I can do. You know, that's between you and God. And I believe that this is a testing time for those who profess to follow God. You remember Christ had vast multitudes following everywhere he went. And one day he told them, he said, You must eat of my flesh because it is food indeed. And you must drink of my blood because it is blood uh, drink indeed. And it said that many of the people quit following him because it was a hard saying, right? He knew those people out there through the power of the Holy Spirit. He had the discernment. You and I can have that. He didn't use anything that we don't have access to today. If those people had stayed and asked him 
as his disciples often did after he made a statement that was, you know, a little unclear. <coughs> he would have told them exactly what it meant, but they didn't bother to stay around. They had seen all of the miracles. They had probably eaten some of this bread and fish that had been miraculously provided. But when something hard came along, they left. Now, when you share these things with some people, they'll flash this letter in your face. And that all of a sudden gets to be the, you know, the fact, the measure by which what I say and show you is measured. This is not the facts, folks. This is a deception. It's a misrepresentation of the facts. And the one that wrote it knows that. Now, they may be motivated simply to prevent uh, a confirmation of this being made. That may be their motivation. But the motivation of those who show this around is simply to try to destroy the most precious thing that God has done for us. And tragically, they will have their day in court. And I would ask that you pray for those people. Christ died for them. God loves them. Just pray that, that something that God will in some way intervene in their lives so that they will not be fighting against the God who has done so much for them. Okay. Um, that's probably about it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's time. I'd like to.